hey guys welcome back to my channel if you're a new subscriber thank you so much for subscribing thank you for joining the growing family and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back so from the title of today's video we are going to be talking about a a somewhat controversial topic i mean this is 2022 so i don't think it's as controversial as it used to be but I may be wrong so we're going to be talking about masturbation but i'm going to be approaching it from two angles i'll approach it from singleness and then also from marriage so let's head right into the video when it comes to this particular topic there are usually two things or two questions that i hear a lot whether directly or indirectly the first one being i'm having sex with myself i'm sleeping with myself i'm not fornicating so what's the harm i'm not hurting anybody and then number two the bible does not outrightly condemn masturbation or can you prove from the bible that masturbation is a sin so my response to these two questions is this sex was meant or sex was created for two people popular bible verse says and for this reason a man shall leave his father's house and shall be joined to his wife and the two of them shall become one flesh and if you check throughout scripture when he's referring to sexual activity he's always referring to it as a as an act that exists between a man and a woman now when you're talking about masturbation i believe that it is going contrary to god's original design and purpose and intent of sex you see sex was created or sex is an act that allows both parties to please each other to satisfy each other that's why the bible will say that husbands your body is not your own you know and likewise your wife and wives your body is not your own your body is for your husband but when you're masturbating it's just about yourself you're only thinking of how you can be pleased there's nobody it's basically selfishness you're not thinking of anybody, it's just yourself. You see, masturbation does not produce fruit of the spirit. <laughs> that is just the truth. When a husband and a wife are being intimate and they do it out of love and out of a desire to please each other, more fruit of the spirit is produced like patience, um, gentleness, long-suffering. Do you get? But when you're masturbating, what fruit of the spirit are you creating from that experience? It's only leading to more gratification. And then another point that I'm going to raise is this. When you're masturbating, are you thinking of how the grasses are so green, how the hills and the mountains have been wonderfully created? That's not what you're thinking about. You're most likely fantasizing about an image or a video or something that you have watched that is pornography so how does that glorify god you see and then that is lost because the bible also says that if you so much as look lustfully as another woman you are committing what adultery best believe that as a single you are not left out if you so much look lustfully at a woman or a man you are committing fornication which makes me to realize and understand that god is not necessarily just looking at your act he's looking at your heart because he says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks he says man looks at the outward appearance but god looks at the heart so that's just to say that god is interested in what is going in fact i don't know if i should say he's more interested in what's going on inside of you than what is going on outside look at the case of the fig tree Jesus looked at the fig tree. It looked lush and beautiful on the outside, but it had no fruit. And fruit is something, fruits are produced through what happens internally that we cannot see. Okay, and Jesus cursed that tree. So that's just to say that God is more interested in what's going on inside our hearts. And then also, this is me. I'm not saying that this is anywhere in the Bible, but I just feel like this is something that I felt like my eyes open to see. Physical intimacy is like a prayer. It's an act of worship. That's why you see Christian couples that make jokes and say, oh, um, intense worship or something like that. So what does the Bible say about worship, about prayer? You know, it says, do it in secret and your God that sees what happens in secret will reward you in the open, okay? It says, don't be like the hypocrites who go out on the road you know to pray or to worship god so that everybody can see 
I see, I, I see physical intimacy like that. That's why you see that a man and a woman, they have, they'll meet privately. And then the evidence that they met privately is through the big spill mark. No matter how you try to hide it, eventually a baby will come out, all things being equal. I mean, if sex was meant to be put on display, then the phrase, get a room, would not exist. Think about it. <laughs> okay, yeah. So uh, my husband and I were opportune to speak at a youth event, and somebody asked the question. And said, "What's the damage of um, pornography and masturbation?" And this is one thing I'll say: is this. You see that the truth is that pornography addiction grows. It can start with you just viewing um, pictures or videos of maybe male and female and then it builds up. Before you know it, you're viewing stuff about animals, that's bestiality, you know, same sex, child pornography. That addiction, the perverseness, it grows. It doesn't stop. It doesn't reduce. It doesn't say, oh, I've had enough with you. Let me let you go. No you will find yourself getting sucked into deeper and deeper things and then what this does is that without you realizing it you are damaging your chances of being turned on easily by your spouse let's say you get married now maybe while a normal thing like a case or something is supposed to stimulate you sexually you find that you are not able to be turned on easily because you are used to stimulating yourself using various types of things and now it's almost like this person will have to work harder and then it can build on on healthy expectation and also you see people who get married and then they're expecting their partner to fight karate and jing chong and you know in the bedroom and then when they are not able to meet these unhealthy expectations they start getting dissatisfied and which leads them to want to start looking elsewhere so this is one of the um, effects of masturbation and then by the time you are so used to pleasing yourself you know like you know your body or you need to be aware of your body then how is a partner supposed to be able to work into that it's like you can do it by yourself now and then you find that you are an expert at pleasing yourself and then your partner is struggling to give you that satisfaction and i believe that it just cause dysfunction in your physical um, intimacy life if that is a correct use of words. Another thing that I would like to talk about is people can argue and say, oh, okay, I'm not supposed to think of another person. I'm not supposed to think of another man or another woman. But now I'm married. It's my wife. And when she sends me some of her cute pictures or he sends me some of his cute pictures, is why? what's wrong if I masturbate to those pictures? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. It takes me back to the first point that I made that said sex was designed to exist between two people, not one person, okay? And so if you are trying to please yourself or satisfy yourself when your partner is not there, then how are you fulfilling the design of sex? How are you engaging God's intent and purpose and design of sex? You are not. It will lead to you objectifying your spouse. They now become a mere image of thing. And then it also means that you don't need them. That means you can do it by yourself. You don't need them. And I don't think that is healthy for any marriage that you, a situation exists whereby one of the partners remember the point of sex is not for you to just gratify yourself it's not just about you it's about sharing it's about building intimacy not about how great it was or how how long it lasted or whatever or who was able to do the most moves that's the idea that the world sells you know how many chairs and tables you broke when you guys were passionate no it's not mostly about that it's mostly about coming together giving sharing exploring do you understand a declaration of love an act of worship an act of service for one another so if you say oh it's my spouse it's my wife i can masturbate to them if it's just them i'm thinking of then how you are just objectifying them and then i think that if you can do that for your spouse with time you will not see anything wrong with doing that for other people random women that you meet outside okay so no i don't believe that it's okay to do that even in marriage and then the last thing that i want to talk about i'll give a disclaimer okay i'm not a sex expert 
I'm not the therapy, sex therapist, or a professional, or anything like that. This is not saying that oh, everybody should live like this or everybody should do this. This is my personal opinion. So during that event I told you about, someone also asked a question. I said, "Oh, are sex toys permissible in a Christian?" Life? And I actually thought that that was a very good question, honestly speaking. So this is my opinion and my view on this topic of sex. So okay, while I was um, preparing for this topic to talk about it, I was like, okay. When you say sex toys, there's only one thing that comes to my mind, Mm -hmm. the D word, you know, that's what comes to my mind, or the V word. So I was like, I don't want to speak from a place of ignorance or much ignorance. So let me do some research, go online and see, maybe there's more to this thing that I do not know of, okay? And I did my research and I just want to read something for you that I saw. And when I saw it, I was just like, this proves my point. I saw this on a website and this is what they said. said, with so much pressure surrounding sex, you can forget intercourse and masturbation can be fun games, adults plays. And now this website was talking about like sex toys. And I did another research like what are sex toys? And it says that sex toys basically are objects of masturbation. That's, that, that's just it. And I was just like, so why, why is it necessary? Like, what would be the purpose? I mean, what kind of um, desired effect would you want to have with your partner? What kind of um, sensation do you want to feel that God has not given you parts of your body to use? I don't know. I don't know. Is it finger? <laughs> like, I believe that both partners can work it out. Like, if there's anything you want to do, I believe that. A human body, the male body, the female body, I believe that it possesses everything needed. Yes, it may take time. Yes, it may take practice. It may take intentionality. But I believe at the end of the day, it can be achieved. So personally, I don't see the use of sex toys. I feel like it's, it's a third party, like you're bringing in something outside, like an outside thing, okay? So feel free if you are, if your convictions tell you otherwise, you know, and you feel fine with that, your conscience isn't disturbed in any way, like fine. And if anything changes, you know, if I get some scriptural backing that proves otherwise or like convinces me otherwise or convicts me otherwise, then I think I'll be sure to let you know. But for now, this is my take on this topic, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you took something away. Thank you so much for watching. If you did, please let me know in the comment section. Give the video a thumbs up and please share it to as many people as you can share it with, okay? Until next time, I'll see you in my next video. Have a wonderful week. Mm -hmm.